Zahama Shetago, I'm the bookkeeper for support. Uh, I do the books and I'm here for the SRP workshop. Uh, it's going to be held from the 5th to the 9th. I'm Leslie Swartz, I'm from Stellenbosch University, I'm in the psychology department and I was appointed lead research partner for the Sabbath research program. My name is uh, Swansue Mazula, I am from Zimbabwe, my organization is uh, the Federation of Organizations with Disabilities in Zimbabwe, I'm the deputy chairperson for um, children and youth programs. Yes, I'm working for Safford. Uh, I joined Safford in 2000 in May. Mm -hmm. I'm working as an information assistant. I'm from Zimbabwe and I've got, um, I've got a mental health um, background. Um, in each, in, before I was working at the University of Zimbabwe when they were when they initiated the living conditions surveys on people with disabilities, I started working on those on the initial project with the late Alexander Peary, with On Ida from Norway. Um, but then I got um, post in WHO and I had to leave and I had to hand over the post. And uh, I was told that uh, Safford needs somebody. To actually um, manage the SRP, and I was actually dealing with various surveys and research in mental health, abuse in WHO. The time has gone whereby disabled people were only interested in the activism, politics without facts. My expectation is um, that the, the trainings. Be able to assist the organization in their respective countries in terms of research. Long at last, we have a pool of researchers within the disability movement who are going to look at issues because our motto is nothing about us without us. This is different because it was the first program for which is um, um, gathering you know, evidence for advocacy, for the activism and it supports the other programs like the gender program, the HIV program, uh, the capacity building program because you need data to, to work on these other programs. Programs without actual data, it's very difficult to know where to put the resources and what resources to look for. Because you know that we are working with limited resources, so we need to make priorities. But you know, it's more cost effective if you've got the actual data. The um, late Alexander Perry, I'm sure you've heard a lot about, yeah. was um, uh, the Director General of, of Safford came to Cape Town with a group of people around the town that they were negotiating the funds. So were, um, he was there and there was a representative also from the funder and they set up a meeting with a group of researchers in the disability field and they asked, at very short notice, they asked us to prepare, those who were interested, to prepare some documents on disability and poverty in the region. They had about a week to write something. And um, so I did it. <laughs> and, um, and on the basis of that, really, then I, I made a presentation. They, they had a meeting in what's what I made, and I made and I made a presentation there of, of, of what we found in the week in terms of our desktop review. And on the basis of that, they, they I think it was largely on the basis of that, but also through people who knew me that Safford had already worked with, they approached. Stellenbosch University to be the lead research partner. And then we, um, we we said to them we would have preferred to have done it as a consortium, um, run 
uh, uh, through the auspices of disabled people in South Africa with a number of universities involved. But the funder felt quite strongly that uh, they wanted one university to be involved. And if, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first or one of the first occasions on which they'd appointed a non-British, because they're British funders, mm -hmm. non-British university to be the lead research partner. So I, I think they wanted quite a simple sort of relationship. We had to identify a university which was within our region, which understands the cultures within our region. Initially, the program wanted somebody from north, but you know the issues with people from the north, they have to acclimatize to the way we do things here, which which, 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 which sometimes creates lots of challenges, because they take a lot of things for granted. What is the norm in the north is not normally the norm in our region, in terms of the, the, the way things are done. Because, I mean, we are talking, you know, you know disability is, 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 is a social thing. What we found through the training, and for me one of the most important parts of the training, has been the way in which we've developed an attitude, and in fact Amy was one of the people who spoke about this in her most significant change, but I won't make you say it, Amy, because I know you'll be nervous to say it. At first, uh, before I started this training, I was just hearing from people, research, research, but I didn't have any information about it. But since I uh, started uh, attending this course, it's when it opened my mind. I have knowledge about what the research is all about. But uh, when you are researching, you go to field, you meet different people. Uh, you, when you, are, you want to interview people, you have to introduce yourself so that uh, should be friendly, so that the responder should be open to you, should give me more information, uh, whatever you want from them. Uh, and then uh, I've learned uh, that a uh, research uh, need to be patient whenever you go for interviews, whenever you meet different people. Because uh, once you be maybe laugh or talk to them, they not give you information. So before I started this uh, uh, research, I didn't have any information about this. And again, this research has really opened my mind. And now I'm uh, so happy that I um, find myself in the complex world of the research. It's, uh, it's interesting to be in this field because you meet different people and uh, you learn different things from um, your respondents. If when these uh, workshops for the preparation of the SRP started. Uh, they looked like they were boring us. I remember I went to Malawi, uh, this round table things. We couldn't understand what was going on. Um, firstly, when I, I thought of it, when I heard of it, I thought it's just a, an ordinary workshop like other workshops. I have, expect, I have expected that I will um, see different people and from there is a, the workshop whereby we listen to the facilitators then questions then from there back home but uh, my, my expectation has differed today because it's a, a participatory workshop whereby i'm here to learn not from the facilitator but from each other then take it apply it home then when we meet again we have to show up what we have done Mm. Rather than to say to to to, to say you no, know, we have uh, this uh, that constrain me and this that constrain me, and uh, the training itself, to my expectation, to my um, learning and uh, to what I have observed, it's a good uh, tool which I could say it's a, 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 a leadership uh, kit tool, whereby it gives you much more detailed information about what is expected from your organization and also to our organizations it's a, a tool of monitoring and evaluating our programs because when we come up it shows me when you come up with a program it should be a program that has a meaning that means it should have a target it should have a, a methodology of doing it and the, to have the findings or the, the results and that result, you have to align them to your goal.
You have to align them to your uh, objectives and even your, your aims. The most important thing about research, more important than whether you can do the statistics or, or write the big words, is that you understand the research process. And I can tell you that people who pass this course will have an understanding of the research process. I think uh, I was fortunate to be part of this process because uh, at first when I heard the word research, it was really scary. But because of uh, Professor Leslie, uh, Professor Swartz, I think he took us through the process so that by now, I think I've gained that everything really to be appreciated, it should be ying or revolve around evidence. It should be based on evidence, research. Mm. And uh, the other thing I've gained is that the research is not, uh, it, it, you need to follow certain steps so that the research is credible. Okay. Results or finding from research, they are not the entirely based on what you got, but entirely based whether the process in coming with that findings was it really structured and scientifically done according to the rules of research. Okay. Yes. It has been an eye opener. I, yeah, I don't know how I can explain it, but it has been so fantastic. My colleagues, regardless of my age, I think I'm the oldest, they've respected me in every way. And I really appreciate their support. When I, jo when I, I, I joined this uh, um, program, I never thought I was going to make it. But I'm still here and I'm going on. And actually I'm, I'm more, more open, more developed than I thought I, I, I could be. There have been challenges of venues, of um, people missing flights. There have been lots of practical challenges. Uh, there also has have been um, one of the, the, the big uh, problems that we faced is um, we've had a lot of difficulty with timekeeping. Some of the trainees, I think, have a heavy night out before certain mornings and they don't want to get up in the morning because their head might be a little bit sore. I'm not sure why. We are suffering of a lot on, on available of braille materials. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, sometimes if you are doing the classes, if somebody is writing on the chalkboard and then nobody can read through on what, they, on what is written there, then it's, it's, it's very, very big challenge to us. And uh, the, 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 the materials that I mentioned, taking in sometimes, um, if we're given an, an, an assignment, but it's not written in the braille, so to me it's difficult to, to read it. When I came into the, the program, um, what had already been arranged was that each of the ten countries, so that's Angola, Botswana, Malawi, Mozambique, Lesotho, Namibia, South Africa, Swaziland, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, um, had appointed one man and one woman each to, to participate as trainees in the program. Um, we didn't have a say in who the trainees were. Um, and with hindsight, it would have been better if we had. One of the challenges was that when the program was um, initiated, I was not part of it. So I had to fit into what was already planned. <laughs> Being uh, a technical person, you know, there were other things that maybe I would have, you know, put into place before the program was, uh, was and also it, the challenge also was that uh, my feelings that, the, 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 you know, the number of countries involved were a bit ambitious, you know. If you are starting a, a new project, it's better to start with fewer countries and then increase slowly, learn from the experiences and then improve on those experiences. But if you start with a lot <laughs> of countries, the challenges are a bit bigger. Mr. Piri passed away and there was no handover uh, take home. So that was the major, the major challenge. I had to find out on my own 
and see where Peter had left uh, Peter what, what he had done so far and what he wanted to do later. So these were all the challenges I, I met. Um, the other, I suppose, the, the challenges that the, the entire um, research, the proposal for the, for the training, of which is part of the research program, was um, I didn't have anything to do with that, or we didn't at, at, at Stellenbosch. And um, I think when I looked at the proposal itself early on, and it certainly became clear through the, through the program, is that there were quite a lot of unrealistic expectations about what was possible and what wasn't. Um, and um, insufficient thought also about really what, what needed to be in place in order to facilitate a program like this. We have to invite, to send the invitations to each country. At times they don't respond in time, uh, so it's a challenge. And some of them, they will need visas. Uh, like yesterday, when I went to the airport, uh, only to be told that uh, the guy didn't get the, the visa, he didn't come. So, but I bought a ticket for, it was 800, can you imagine? And I booked the accommodation, we paid. So that's a challenge. There was no budget for the trainees to get laptops, for example. There was no, not enough thought about how trainees would communicate with one another in between training sessions. There was no budget, uh, we had to sort of wiggle the budget. No budget for, I mean, they collected small amounts of data for their costs. And, and with some of them, the costs are quite considerable because, you know, for example, Constance Otukile, who's a wheelchair user from rural Botswana, when she calls a taxi, she can get a taxi to take her around, but it costs more than the average person. And for her to get in, she can't get anywhere in, in, in her wheelchair. So, so, so we, those sorts of things, you know, with hindsight, should have been thought about before. The other thing that I would do is that uh, if we are actually uh, looking for trainees who would have a selection criteria, but there was no selection criteria, I don't think the DPOs were were given help with a selection criteria, which made it difficult. And they also did not really understand. They just thought it was just going to be a one of activity. But research is a process. Because we had problems when DPOs would say, ah, oh, we need somebody else to participate. This person is there. So we told them, no, 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 research is not an activity. It's a process. When when, when the my organization nominated me uh, to be part of this training, I didn't accept this. I, I didn't uh, expect this much. Uh, so I, I've learned them. Um, I didn't know much about research, and uh, through the process, the process that I've gone through, um, the theory, the practical, um, there's a lot that I've learned, and a lot there's a lot that I can say. I think that have changed my, my thinking in general, uh, because now whatever I see. I always think of proving it was a, as, a, as a researcher. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't just see a tree and say this tree is, is not going well because of ABCD, but we need to prove is there, is, is there water, is there sun. So my thinking now is see well, whatever I do, whatever I think is about it, proving whether this is right, I will do the facts. We then you know, started a training with people with very different. Uh, knowledge and expectations themselves about what would be involved. So um, some were quite experienced um, and had done some research and, and were working on master's degrees. Some had, you know, like, I think about the equivalent of standard aid, certainly they had completed mm -hmm. us for junior certificate. Um, so there, there's, there remain um, vast differences in the literacy levels of the candidates. The, the com the, how comfortable they are in working with figures and numbers. I always say to my, I've got a brother who is a maths teacher, I said the last time I did maths was about 40 years ago, but now I can do maths, I can, my communica communication skills are more developed, I know I'm a good communicator, but this has added more, more, more a, a, a impact. My involvement in research not necessarily take place in, in when ASRP started. I already did research 
as part of the requirement for me to attain my first degree. I didn't have that uh, confidence and right. that uh, um, sharing skill. Right. I, I was the person who likes play. Right. When it comes to business, I will just keep quiet right. and look at things. And then later, I will laugh at what somebody did that I think is stupid. Right. Uh, that was uh, my, 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 my character. But through the tra this training and uh, when I grew up, I learned that we learn from our mistakes. Um, we, had, we didn't succeed, although we tried. It's a long story to to get computers for candidates during the um, during the training. Um, some of them are quite computer literate, some of them aren't. And I would have liked, you know, from my point of view as a trainer, that by the, by this time, that all of them would be able to sell themselves mm. to organisations as computer literate, and that really wasn't a possibility. Um, the the issue of training people from both English-speaking and Portuguese countries is difficult, as I'm sure you've realised. Mm. Um, and I mean, the, 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 the Portuguese-speaking people have had to put in a lot of extra effort. But uh, uh, since I began to attend these meetings, I believe formas mais profundas de dar um tratamento com digno os dados. So I, I learned it. Um, uh, uh, most deep ways to treat the data. Nião, então eu agradeço muito essa essa o meu chefe por ter concedido essa oportunidade. É muito obrigada mesmo de coração. But now, so, uh, muito, she muito. was afraid. She said, "No, no, I can't do that." Can. Uh -huh. But now she, 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 she's open to do everything. She can now stand and say. Oh, when there are a lot of people, you can say, okay, this this is wrong, this is good, this all. I'm not always convinced, given the pace of the way in which we work, um, and how things develop quite quickly in interaction, because all the training is done interactively, that um, with the, the level of translation and interpretation service that, that we have, that things are always explained properly to the Portuguese speaking. I have been doing this for, I think, two years, helping because I'm becoming as, um, as an activist on disability. So sometimes when there is a need, I do this to work alone and I have to do this um, continuous translation. It means no one stops. We are talking and I keep talking. It's too difficult, but myself I like it because we learn. It is easy to find the, the, the words in English and translate Portuguese. It is easy, easy, easy. But when it when it is to do the, the inverse, it's quite difficult. But I'm still learning. Let me say, for example, in this uh, SRP workshop, there are no braille machines. So if you want to write something, I have to write on his behalf because he can use. Uh, an ordinary paper so in a pen. Ah, okay. Yeah, so she's, sometimes when there is no braille or document, I have to read for him because he used to only braille. Yeah, all sorts of people make up for, 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 for the difficulties in different ways, just like, you know, um, um, amongst the trainees, some of the people who are the least literate have worked the hardest and so they have made up. For me, in terms of people's actual performance in the in the in the training, and in ter certainly in terms of understanding research, um, the level of education is not a huge factor. So it is it's certainly not the case that all the ones with, with higher qualifications mm -hmm. are better than, than, than the ones mm -hmm. without. To get from a diverse uh, individuals, different disabilities, different locations in South Africa and in the sort of because we traveled across the country to gather information and uh, the other thing was that the excitement was based on that what you usually get as policies and the, at the end of the event that the assembly rhetoric that not really being implemented on the ground. No one is benefiting out of those policies. And there are various reasons why they are not being implemented. 
activities of research in my country are so rare. Uh, we don't have people, mostly in the disability fraternity. We don't have people who are who are specializing in research. But the most significant significant change that I may talk about as for me is since I attended the, the SRP program, I've been you know I've been faced with opportunities of being part of several research work in the country, like the Catholic Church uh, in the country is doing, is dealing with the youth. They want to see how many youth are being attacked by the pandemic disease. So I'm being involved. The church administrators, you know, uh, after knowing that I, I, I know something on research, they conducted me that I should lead their team of studying where about youth who are maybe attacked by the pandemic and how we should assist them. I think that's been quite amazing to me as an experienced university teacher. And most of my work is with postgraduate students, so it's a bonus and a bonus master's mm. doctorate. In terms of under really understanding what research is about, it's about really looking at the world in a way in which things, things are made strange, as the anthropologists say, not taking things for granted, um, not accepting things at face value. Um, the trainees have, have got it much more quickly than many of my postgraduate students who are more privileged. Because I think, I think, and, and one doesn't want to romanticize the difficulties that these trainees have had, and, and it's not right that they've been excluded in the way in which they have. But I think that, that, that you know, if people are excluded and they manage to get to the, the position of accessing a training like this, they must actually have had some skills in thinking about their position, thinking about why is the world like this, why am I excluded, why don't I have what other people, why did my body not look the same, why do people not take me seriously, what it's, and, and so on and so forth. And the minute you do that, in some senses you're a researcher already, you're thinking about the world, whereas many of my students who are quite privileged have never had to think about things, they haven't had to think about their lives in that way, so research is something Kind of separate, and that's that's been one of the, the most interesting things. Uh, communication and framing, and framing between uh, you, the TPO, and whatever you want to do in the field. And I suppose the second amazing thing for me has been the development of people's confidence. You know, we were all very, we didn't know one another, and we were all very shy and anxious, including me. But, you know, I come obviously with all the sort of paper credentials and, and so on, and I mean, I'm pretty confident that I, I know about basic research. But people have come out of their shells in such a way. And, um, and there's been a gender component to that as well, where um, in the beginning, with one exception, in fact, I mean, so there are 10 women and 10 men as trainees. There was one woman who, from the beginning, spoke equally with the men, only one. And now, um, that's, that's really changed quite a lot. I mean, um, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to do, but I mean, there's certainly you know, far more. Of the, of the quiet women <laughs> you know, are, are talking and, and, and in fact I remember in the beginning when I saw the first piece of work that, they, that they, the students gave to me, the trainees, and I saw what some of these women were capable of, I realized these, you know, these people have more to, more to offer than, than, than one would think. Uh, the experience that I've got during the sessions or during the running of the program is that uh, they've raised something from nothing because I never dreamt of being a researcher so but now I'm eager to learn so many things I've learned so many things and I'm eager to learn more that's why uh, always where I go I observe everything uh, I listen to everything and have questions always because now I'm a qualified researcher so I, I'm broadening my skills so that that's been really nice. I, mean, I think it's been a general thing, but um, I'd underestimated, I think, 
and stick to its gender as a factor in, in, in this group. Um, so that's, that's been good. Um, the, um, I mean, yeah, the, the organization, Safford as a whole, has had a very difficult time, especially with, with Alexander mm. passing away and so on. And I think there's been, a, you know, there's been a whole combination of challenges. Um, we, you know, we had a midterm review of, of the broader, this falls for, in a bigger project called the Safford Research Program. And on the basis of that, a number of the activities were stopped up and humid mm -hmm. um, because the funder wasn't happy. And the funders also, you know, funding priorities have changed and so on. Um, but we've managed to keep kind of this going. And I, I think in some ways it's, it's been an enormous challenge. Um, but it's also provided the, the trainees the opportunity to show a level of resilience and being able to put things together. So what's happening today where they're actually um, have put together themselves, and with help from me, but it's their design, a workshop to sell their skills to mm. their own organizations, um, is partly, they should, in some ways, in the way that the project was conceived of, it, it shouldn't have had to happen because the organizations were informed regularly and so on. Um, of all of this, but it's but the the, the, the organisational difficulties in terms of the, 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 the communication between Safford and the constituent organisations has turned they've turned it into an opportunity. So they're marketing themselves now, and I'm very excited about that. And I, I think that that um, so it's not. I mean, they've, they've got some basic research skills. These are not you know highly trained researchers. But I think they understand the, you know, the important concepts. But they've also learned some presentation skills to be more confident, um, how to put a team of people together. Um, and so that's that's very pleasing. Because the other point which, which I always emphasize in, in, in the work, and again, I, I was so naive about this in the beginning, is that you can't have, no organization can have a successful research program if the organization itself isn't to some degree research-minded. Um, so, you, you know, you, you, the, the platform on which you have to build any mm. research project is, is if an organization can think about data, can think about you know, basic questions like who's on our books, who are we serving, are we meeting our needs? So it's monitoring, evaluation, those sorts of things. And, and those things are challenges, you know, um, not only in disabled people's organizations, but in our region. Mm. In and so I think that the, the trainees have, have a role in building that side of their organizations over and above things that are narrowly considered um, research, which I think is quite important. Um, for me, um, it's been, you know, the, an opportunity, I mean, I've, I've had many wonderful opportunities in my, in my career, I've, I've been very lucky in my career. But certainly over the past few years, it's, it's probably been the most, the thing that's influenced me most of everything that I've learned. Yeah. Oh, yes. I've learned an enormous amount. I mean, to to have to, to you know, they, they say if you want to know, how, if you want to learn how to do anything, you have to teach. And to have to teach concepts to people who have, who have no background whatsoever, um, and who are prepared to challenge and to ask questions. Um, so I've had, to, I've had to learn about research. Um, I've really had to learn about how to communicate. I've learned a lot about how the language that I use confuses people. And I, you know, I hadn't really, I'd always thought I was a very good communicator. And I don't think I'm a bad communicator, but I've had to learn much more about that. How, how do you put things? What are the important things? What do you leave out? Um, so that's, that's been amazing. And I've also, um, I've been extremely influenced, I imagine, for the rest of my life by Alexander, unfortunately, who passed away, who I think had a, a remarkable vision for what he wanted to achieve, and who was an amazing politician in, in some senses with a big P, but also with a small P. So, he, you know, we would go around to, to venues where um, he'd notice that you couldn't get into the dining room because there wasn't a rap. Talk to people. So, you know, the next day they'd be building around. You know, so so just in, in, in a quiet way, he, he would sort of make the world more accessible. Mm. So I've learned that, that activism isn't always a huge thing. Mm. I think I learned that from him. But then also the the, um, 
the, the trainees and the, and the support staff, I, mean, I just feel like the opportunity to develop relationships with people I wouldn't normally have. I've traveled a lot. I think I've traveled to many countries, such countries, even I've gone as far as London. So I've gained a lot. Yeah, uh, it's. I, I think it's, it's it's developing our our capacity. It's like capacity building. It's empowering the disabled pe people. Usually, I say it's a a, a, a toolkit. A toolkit, a leadership toolkit, meaning that it's a very vital um, skill for somebody who is a, a leader of a, a movement or a organization to have. That means it will enrich that person with the information, especially information for convincing for the better lives, especially for the DPOs, you are convincing for the better lives and the improvement of the lives of the disabled people. Therefore, SRP is doing a lot of time. <laughs> That's good. Music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs>